inspiration is a weird thing. I'm just kind of sitting here walking and I was like, you know what? I have a really good idea for a video. So we're going to do it. I don't know why I decided to record now. I probably should wait until I got home because the background would be a little more pleasing, but at least you can actually see because the lighting in my apartment fucking sucks. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Windows 8.1 Embedded Industry Pro. Apparently not a lot of people are familiar with it, but it's been something I've been trying to track down for a while now and I finally found a copy. So I'd like to compare this to Windows 10. So let's, uh, I'm in a parking, I'm in like a liquor store parking lot, so this is really weird. I feel really stupid doing this, but that's okay. So what exactly is different with uh, Windows 8.1 Embedded Industry Pro and Windows 10? Uh, well, Windows 8.1 Embedded Industry Pro is designed for more, uh, Obviously, it's in the name, embedded. It gets rid of a lot of the telemetry. It gets rid of a lot of the useless crap like the start icons and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so I installed it on my laptop expecting just to have the stereotypical, oh, well, there's less stuff running so I'll get better battery life, there'll be less stutters, all that kind of stupid stuff. Um, and so far, that, that's basically what it, But then I got curious and I was like, well, maybe there's like an actual performance difference with this stuff. And if that's the case, then it's got to show up in numbers. Because, I mean, there is less crap running. It's got to run better. Um, so yeah, I think what the goal is, is I'm going to go home, I'm going to see how Windows 10 currently runs with my crapped out, uh, gunked up Windows 10 installation and compare it against the completely clean 8.1 Embedded Pro, because that'll be probably the best way to see if there's an actual performance difference, and uh, we'll just go from there. Hey, can I have uh, two state quesadillas? So, I'm just downloading all the benchmark programs now, so that way we can get a proper um, performance metric before and after. Um, so we're starting with Windows 10 because it's what I have installed currently. I'm gonna benchmark everything. I'm then gonna image the hard drive so that way in case I fuck up or it sucks, I can just restore it back. And then um, we'll get to testing it at one. This is gonna be a very long video. I mean, long for me to produce. It's probably not gonna be that long in, in hindsight, but that's okay. Can you just not give me a straw? No. There it is. You gotta stay hydrated while you're benchmarking. This is, this is exhaustive stuff. All right, now before I actually get started on my benchmarking run, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up on my specs and all that fun stuff. I am rocking a Core i7 6700K, an EVGA 1080, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, I've got an 840 EVO as my boot drive, and a six terabyte RAID array as my mass storage, so blah, 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 IO's not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna have Cam, uh, NZXT's Cam software running in the background just to uh, see uh, logs over time, and we're going to take the best of three runs of each of these benchmark programs and average them together to get our final numbers. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of benchmarking, so cue crappy montage, go. All right, so we're done with our benchmarks. And now comes the task of installing 8.1 Embedded. I've pre-prepared an image, basically. I just, I'm gonna flash the image to my solid state drive, and then Windows 8.1's just gonna kind of install itself. So I'm booting from my laptop's drive because you can't image the same drive that you're booted from. So I'm just gonna go to my pre-arranged directory here, and then I'm gonna load up uh, here we go, HGD raw copy, which is what I use for all of my disk imaging purposes. So I think I'm gonna go play video games while I'm waiting for this to do its thing. So I'll be back. All right, so fairly quick and we're already on the personalization screen. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, so now we're just gonna finalize our settings real quick and uh, we're already on the desktop. <laughs> if you've ever installed 8.1 before, you know that there's usually, like, I on my laptop, I, I went through the whole, hi, we're still setting things up, so hang on a second. I didn't even get to that point on my computer here. All right, so now we got all the drivers installed and everything's up and going, let's do some more benchmarks. So let's, it's done, let's pan over. Dramatic reveal. 
Duh. <laughs> 894 was my highest and 880 was my lowest. So I'll say 885. 923, 922, and 920 now. So holy shit. So just as a reminder, I haven't averaged out the numbers yet, but I'm just gonna show you across the board here. And so you can already see there's been a pretty substantial improvement. Real bench, 106, 103, 106, 49, 105, 99 to 107 across across the board, almost hitting 108 here. <sighs> let's keep benching, let's see if this, this improves. I honestly did not expect this at all. Wow, 4021. Okay, well, here's the settings I was running at, as well as my configuration. So that way you can see that I am not overclocked. I'm running the same driver. Unfortunately, I'm getting basically the same numbers, but uh, that's about what I expected. All right, now I'm just confused. <laughs> I think I'm going to run it one more time, and I'm just going to throw this number out, because it's so, so ahead of everything else that I have. Okay, well, as I'm sure most of you were, I was actually very surprised at the results of these benchmarks. I honestly did not expect this, like, at all. I was expecting it to be within a percentage margin of error. Uh, it turned out to not be. So that's got me thinking that... Obviously, my super flawed testing methodology of testing a really broken, gunked up OS compared to a brand new fresh OS that on top of being a fresh OS is also a naturally more lean OS may not be the best, fairest comparison. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to clean install Windows 10 and we're going to see how those numbers stack up to what we're looking at here. And we'll go from there. So for like two hours now, I've been trying to get Windows to install and for some reason it just flat out will not install on my desktop. So I'm having to install it on my laptop. I did earlier, once it reboots, just unhook the drive, plug it into my desktop. I just don't know why for some reason. It's like I tried different Windows installations, I tried different hard drives, I've tried, like, I, I gave up. Uh, it's nine o'clock now. I think the last video I recorded was like at five or six, so. Great use of my time there. So I finally get Windows 10 up and running and installing. Uh, not only is the Windows 10 installer just kind of garbage with the last few updates. Uh, what, what is this? <laughs> Why do I need this? Uh, oh, Disney Magic Kingdoms, Dolby Access, Candy Crush, so... Oh my god. Like, six or seven bloatware apps just on the main screen. I guess eight if you count Skype. Nine, if you count paint 3D, I don't, mm -hmm. All right, so we finally got <laughs> Windows 10 installed and up and going. So without any further ado, let's get the benchmarking started. So I just thought this was actually really funny and I wanted to get this on film. The CPU uses just spike randomly doing absolutely nothing but idle. Like it's just going all over the place. Not even trying. Dude, I'm tired. It is currently 1.28 a.m. I've been doing benchmarks for three days. I'm a little tired right now, so if I seem a little rambly, I apologize. But yeah, so I think I finally have enough data where we can come to a conclusion. We can actually talk about what the benefits of using 8.1 embedded industry pro versus windows 10 or even just clean installing whatever os you're currently using now the obvious thing here is that the synthetic benchmarks seem to have the most impact and that's just because there's less stuff running so there's just more raw power that they can throw at the problem uh, the thing that caught me off guard though was just how inconsistent overall the results are it doesn't matter if they're gaming benchmarks or if they're even the synthetics because real bench on the windows 10 clean performed worse than the Windows 10 crappy installation somehow, and not by like a small amount, like a consistently lower amount. I also ran into a really weird bug with Superposition where it would just randomly score 100 points higher. The Superposition, I wouldn't look too highly with those numbers because they seem to just kind of be all over the place. Um, the gaming benchmarks as well kind of caught me off guard with how inconsistent they were, especially with games like Siege, where at first I honestly thought that I had just, you know, fucked up and done the wrong graphic settings, but it's like, no, like looking at the data um, before the averages and after the averages, it's, no, it's just that inconsistent between platforms. So I think the takeaway of the story here is that it's not the raw performance that you'll really be gaining 
doing something like a clean installation or even going drastic with it and going to 8.1 Embedded Industry Pro. The benefits are going to be more superficial than just numbers on a spreadsheet. Uh, they'd be things like increased battery life and uh, better performance on lower end or hardware just because there's less crap running. Uh, and on top of that, you don't have to deal with the stupid Windows 10 bloat that's just kind of everywhere. All in all, would I recommend you doing 8.1 Embedded Industry Pro? Uh, no, because it's basically literally impossible to find it, let alone find an actual license for it. If you somehow fall into like that tenth of a tenth of a percent, that has access to 8.1 Embedded Industry Pro and can get a key for it, yeah, fuck it, go for it. It, it. it was a pretty great experience. I unfortunately am limited to just the trial. So I think my, I think at the end of the day, the suggestion just comes down to j just use 8.1 if you're just looking for a stable system, because it's pretty easy to disable Windows updates. It's pretty, you don't have to worry about Cortana. You, it's fairly easy to kind of strip out versus something like Windows 10 which every week there's a new update that will just revert all your changes or will introduce new bloat or do all kinds of crazy stuff without your permission. But again, everything is so inconsistent that it really just depends on what you're doing. If all you're doing is gaming, it's I wouldn't recommend it. Just stick with what you got. Maybe just do a clean installation of whatever your current OS is. Don't worry about it. If you're doing video editing, maybe I can see this being, being an advantage. That's about all I got. <laughs> This, was, this video is a metric ass load of work and I'm very disappointed that the that the answer was just, well, it depends. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought. Did the video actually turn out the way that you thought it did? Um, I will say, I was actually very impressed that Embedded Industry Pro had that much of a performance in, improvement. Um, it's basically like a free overclock, so I might get to overclocking once I can find a better cooler. I don't know what my favorite part is. My favorite part is when, I, when I'm Plugging in this SD card after I hit the stop record button and I offload the footage and I go to bed. Thumbs up if you liked the video, uh, please, because like I said, this was a metric ass load of work. I'd like to get to 10 likes on this video because I think my record in the last little bit has been like about seven or eight. So let's let's shoot for 10. And with all that said, guys, hope you guys have a good night. <laughs>